this isn't an off-the-shelf thing, is it? This, this is you have custom made this. Yes, we've had here. to take out the original LCD screens we did before. Right. Uh, custom write the software to drive the screen to talk to the existing Aston navigation. I bet that was fun. <laughs> It's been a year to get okay. the whole thing together. Yeah. So hello, welcome back to Aston Installations. When I say welcome back, if you were an earlier subscriber, around about this time last year, we bought my Aston Martin DBS here for an upgrade which quite literally changed the use case proposition of that car, which, as small as it sounds, was Apple CarPlay. And I'll explain to you when we get in the car in a minute why it was a game changer for the daily use case of that car. But today, we're taking that a step further, quite literally a evolution of where it started because the guys at Aston Installations have had phenomenal feedback. Interestingly, a lot of it from you, the audience, from the previous video, and they have developed something so cool which is gonna take the use case of the DBS a massive step further. Okay, so first of all, before I introduce you to the next stage of this project, just behold the state of my beautiful car. Uh, this is all part of the process of ultimately uh, upgrading the screen, which is what we're here to talk about. So those of you guys who tuned in last year may remember that we added Apple CarPlay to the functionality of the DBS. Now that may not seem a big deal because most modern day cars come with the functionality, but take it from me, you take it for granted just how handy it is you jump in, you put on Waze, Google Maps, Spotify, whatever it is, and it just happens. It's not until you're in an older car, which doesn't even have a USB port, <laughs> that you're like, how do you use this as a Grand Tour in an age where Waze is helping you spot uh, traffic congestion, um, speeding cameras, etc. And also wireless CarPlay, super, super helpful. So the first project was to add that functionality to this screen. However, if we look at this screen, this is the OEM factory fit, which quite frankly is like looking at MS-DOS. <laughs> it's really old school. And even when you had the functionality of CarPlay on there, the, the apps were there, it would work, but it's so strange looking at a contemporary application on a very old screen, because it was so pixelated. Sometimes you could barely make out street names. It was so bad. So today we're back here 12 months later, because honestly, as a result of the interest in this product, Aston Installations have developed their own bespoke high definition screen to fit in this place. And on top of that, it's wireless Apple CarPlay. So I cannot tell you when I've lived with this, just with the basic functionality of CarPlay, I ended up using the car so much more. I don't know about you, but I default. I get in a car, I stick in the phone and Waze goes on first, just to save my bacon from any speeding fines uh, or to divert me around traffic. And if you want to use your car as it was intended, as a Grand Tour, as soon as I get out of my own area and I'm not entirely sure where I'm going, SatNav goes on. The original SatNav on this is borderline horrendous. And until I, genuine true story, until I came to Aston Installations and had the Apple CarPlay mod installed, I kept this closed. I never even opened it because it was so bad. Now, the journey to that means lots of screwdrivers and bolts and electronic rewirings. I mean, look at down here, the, the thing is torn apart in order to access what you need. All right, we're back with James. How's things? Good. Okay, good, Busy. good. Yeah, excellent. Good to see. So the last time I was here, you'd torn my baby to pieces and here we are again. What's different? Because it, 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 it's not paining me any less to see the interior as it is. <laughs> One, we, we, we alluded to last time um, the fact the screen resolution just wasn't yeah, there. Yeah. Past 12 months have been working on a fix for it, as you see in front of you. There's various stages here. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give you an idea, that's just come out of your car. Uh -huh. So you can see it's the old six and a half inch, fairly low res. The MS DOS screen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. You get yeah. What we've then done is we strip it back uh -huh. to uh, bare, and we then add in a new LCD screen, which okay. is twice the resolution of this one. Fantastic. So it's an 800 by 480 screen. Okay. We then recode the board to talk to the original Aston navigation, so we can still keep the operating system to open and close it nice. if you don't want to use it. So it feels 
OEM or what? Yes, it feels OEM. The way it operates. It still works the existing system, so you can still have that in the background. Great. Uh, what we then do is to add in our own software, like I say, to make it work with the existing system. Mm -hmm. Laser cut a new holder for it, so this then fixes okay. the screen in right, wow. as it should be. We then repurpose the original uh, ribbon cable with our own board okay. to make the connections easier. This is all terribly posh, James. I'm, I'm enjoying this process. This is cool. You've even got your branding on your own circuit board. That's the whole plan, the whole plan. You uh, have to and be then proud of that, right? I mean, that's cool. Very much so. It's, cool. it's, it's yeah, been a it's long, brilliant. long yeah. road to get <laughs> awesome. here, but we're incredibly proud of what we've done so far with Good. it. And it just makes CarPlay pop that much more it's, because you've got a sharper um, screen. So Waze works. I can't wait. I know this sounds really sad but i can't wait because <laughs> honestly when when Waze was available in the car yeah. and most people will use spotify or yes or apple music or something to, uh, google to, maps to play music the detail the, it it shouldn't do but it did completely transform the daily use case proposition of this car yes because i was getting in avoiding speed cameras traffic etc i were don't you, know it just became a very were you usable plugging car. your phone in as well yeah i was but just to keep the charge up right because particularly it, on a longer journey fully wireless yeah which is cool that it's some current day, like full blown modern cars don't have mm. wireless Apple CarPlay. Yep. So that's awesome. So increase of resolution, full yep. wireless, uh, which we'll have in your car shortly. I'm excited about this. This cool. is super cool. And since then, you've developed a touchscreen version. Yes, we're doing touchscreen for Vanquish, Vanquish, the original one. So in, uh -huh. the, in the workshop here, you'll see we've got uh, the Vank 1 and also sort yes. of Vank 2. Yeah. Um, so touchscreen we're doing for Vank 1 because the screen is that much closer to you. Sure. For safety, yeah. Whereas on this one, it's a bit of a stretch. It's a it? bit too far away, and right. literally your arm's going to be pivoting from your sure. elbow, so it's just too far to be able to reach safely and comfortably. Uh, so we're offering it in Vank One That's with amazing. the updated screen, so you can have touchscreen wireless CarPlay. So in terms of time, then, how long would it take if someone dropped off their car here? How many cups of tea am I having before I got to go? If they, <laughs> <laughs> that's not how hot they are. If um, you're just having CarPlay with the HD screen, yeah. we're looking around about two and a half hour, three hour turnaround. Oh, wow, okay, it's not so bad. So it's fairly straightforward to do. Um, Brilliant. If they've already had our CarPlay system, then uh -huh. we can have them back in again yeah. and rewire it and put the HD screen in. Yeah. Uh, or if you're adding forward and reverse parking cameras like yes. you had originally, uh -huh. then we'll wire that in as well. Honestly, it's been a game changer for the car. I did see one of your client's cars with the HD screen in it. I can't tell you how. It's almost this jacked position of world because you're in this car which still has that old school feel to it. Yes. And then you see this HD screen with CarPlay and you're like, this is cool. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Mega. So we're in the original Vanquish. What is this? 20 years old? Originally, a yes. Design 20, 20. a 20 year old yeah. car. Yeah. And here we are interacting with a touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay. I mean, you've just put on Spotify in a Vanquish. This is surreal. It's, it, what, honestly, I think it's great, like what you actually do here. It's mega. So, Waze? I mean, mapping. really, if you wanted to use this as a daily, game changer. It, almost, it kind of, without doing anything else to the car, it feels like a resto mod. Right. Just okay. having that in there. Yep. It does. It's just a game changer. But it's still the same system. Uh huh. Uh, and I think just under that one, we can then go back to the existing we'll system. Well, look at the difference. Well. So that's the, that's the original that navigation. That is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and let's face it, you wouldn't rely on that to get you anywhere, would you? This isn't an off the shelf thing, is it? This is, you have custom made this. Yes, we've system had here. to take out the original LCD screens we did before. Right. Uh, custom write the software to drive the screen to talk to the existing Aston navigation. I bet that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a year to get okay. the whole thing together. It, yeah. If you've got a Vanquish, I, I, honestly, I genuinely found this with the DBS. Yeah. Front and rear cameras, CarPlay, game changer. Yeah. <laughs> All right, weirdly, this is such an upgrade. It feels like a there we are. handover. Indeed. <laughs> Brilliant. Again. All right, so does it work similarly to before or are there some tweaks? The same as before. Okay. Let me show you the tweaks. Cable for your phone. Phone on. We'll do it wirelessly as well, but if you want to plug okay. it in to charge it, then you can do. Sounds good. The screen will come up. Yep. And now inside there. This is cleaner. This is looking great. Marvelous. Okay, Fantastic. so you've still got the select button there. Okay. So that will go between the existing system 
So if you press that one... Oh, look how crisp that is. Sorry, I'm just overwhelmed by the crispiness. It's game changer, that. It feels like the car's 10 years newer. Good. <laughs> Stop, mate. I really appreciate it. That's it. That, Thank that's, you. That is it. Yeah. Phenomenal. Honestly, it just it feels like a newer car. I know it's, it's such a subtle tweak, but mm. it's a big difference. Thanks very much. No problem at all. Awesome. I'm going to go far and wide now and try and make this ways work. Good to see you again. <laughs> Thanks a lot, James. Cheers, mate. <laughs> so, here it is. I remember the last time that I drove out of Aston Installations looking at my dashboard right there thinking, what a game changer. And even though, fundamentally, this is a very similar product which has activated something that you don't really associate with the interior of a 10-year-old car. Seeing it in HD is a game changer. Honestly, the way this is uplifted, just the whole way this thing feels, it's brilliant. So, the idea now is ultimately to settle into this and use it a, a lot more. Um, amazingly, traveling has resumed, albeit you'd sooner apply for a mortgage than you would a passenger locator form. The amount of paperwork to travel right now is unbelievable. But that doesn't mean that we can't start thinking about road trips again soon, which means I think we should stretch this thing's legs as it was intended, as an ultimate Grand Tourer. And now that we have HD Ways and Spotify and Maps or whatever application you uh, wish to use on your road trip travels, Seriously, the clarity, even small things that you don't really think about. Right now, we've got some sunshine coming through. I've got my sunglasses on on top of here, which is slightly muting the screen. On the previous screen, because it was heavily pixelated, um, it didn't look that great. It wasn't never that sort of clear. This is a real step on. It just feels fantastic. I know to you, the audience, I fully appreciate it might not seem like a big deal, but honestly, as a use case scenario, if you feel like using your DBS or, and this is really important for me to mention, something that I didn't mention earlier on back in there, um, the guys at Aston Installations will install Apple CarPlay all the way up to the latest DBS. That's right, the DBS Superleggera, they can install Apple CarPlay in there for you as well, sir. So if you have a previous gen Vantage, a DB9, a DB11, current gen Vantage, I mean, think of the amount of cars that those guys could convert to Apple CarPlay. I just think it's such a wonderful service and it's great to be able to expose uh, these smaller independent companies who are doing great things. So thanks again to the guys at Aston Installations for the fit out and for reaching out in the first place. You well and truly have changed the game for the daily use case proposition of this wonderful, naturally aspirated V12. As always, questions and comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Ciao.